Hello folks, how's everyone doing? Stop my chair squeaking. Hmm, have you all had a good weekend? Because well, it was Friday, I think we streamed last. Hmm, I hope to have resolved a particular thing before I started this stream this evening. But part of it has eluded me um, so maybe we can talk about that in a mo anyone got any news they want to share I'm not going to go into much uh, detail news wise I want to just jump straight into the tile stuff Please make yourself known, uh, folks. Today I want to deal with um, the tile carrier um, that will work, you know, with ice core and potentially black edge. I've got a real naming problem. Um, which I need to spend some time on. Which is a bit of a pain. Ooh, I have a long list of things that I need to get done. Um, but the most important of these is <clears throat> this printed circuit board, which you'll see upon your left here, on my left. Around the wrong way. Um, Hmm. It's around the right way. The camera. <clears throat> um, I still can't find good suitable name, so we can come back round to that. For the moment, I've just this is black tiles, which isn't the name because that's horrible. But just so I know what it is. Uh, black Eyes 5 is another one, but that doesn't work if you put a black edge board on it, kind of thing. So it's all a bit of a difficult situation as far as naming goes. So I'm going to move on. We're going to look at the schematic in a minute. We're going to make some changes. So just just to remind you then. So. Uh, ice core as is will fit in here so ice core is accepted there are then four outer tiles one two three four which support analog uh, I went through this last week and then we have a fifth tile here which is digital only and then there's a bit of space in the middle here which you know, I'm trying to work out um usage for um whatever goes here is probably not going to be useful from an ice core point of view but will be useful from a black edge point of view if we decide to be able to use the same board for both that just comes from the fact that there are more ios on the black edge version than there are on the ice core version. Um, and it's a bit tricky as to what we choose to do with that. Um, so, who have we got here? Please let yourself be known. And if you have any news to share, do share it with us. Um, there was one bit of news, bear with me a second, it's probably going to steal all of my memory. So I've got so many things running here. Um, dare I do this. No, I'd rather not yet. I could possibly avoid it. I'm only going to run that. 
if um, everything else doesn't get done. It's got a bit of a memory problem. I got a new uh, backup drive as well today, quite a fast one. USB SSD, which is kind of cool. Um, I've ordered a whole bunch of connectors and stuff as well from uh, Asian suppliers, which I'm waiting or hoping will come over the next few weeks or so. Um, I got my USB chips, hurrah! Which has given me some choices, which is cool. Um, I showed those. Uh, yeah, probably not much to see, but. Douche the box. There's about a thousand of these, which is cool. But uh, all on waffle trays. So very pleased about that. Um, still got to do another LCSC order and a few other bits and bobs I'm still missing. Um, found a whole bunch of connectors that I've forgotten about. A whole bag of headers, but they're yellow. Need to think of something to do with those. I don't generally use the yellow ones. I was going through um, bits and bobs the other day trying to work out what I've got, what I need to use, etc. And I came across all sorts of things I've forgotten about. Which is good because that will save me buying a bunch of things. Um, Okay, so let's just jump straight in because I don't think there's any um, any news coming from you guys at the moment. Um, let, let's chat about this first. Okay, let, let me explain the situation. So um, you see the board here. Um, the space in the center here is currently unused. Um, there are also areas under the board that can be used. <clears throat> um, let's switch to the schematic now and I'll show you what we're talking about. So that's the five tile carrier effectively. Um, let me switch. We can look at the design. So this is the current schematic. So on the left hand side here, you can see one, two, three, four tiles, um, which support analog and then one, which is a digital only tile. Which I spoke about last week. The usage here. So if you think about the case of an ice, excuse me, an ice core, then we're using all of the 48 IOs here on this uh, on the digital connector. And let me just highlight it. That's the thing I'm talking about. That's uh, the carrier pattern for a black edge module like ice core. Uh, we're using analog 0 through to 11, 12 analog signals. Three of each go to the analog you know, supporting tiles. Um, in addition, um, we have um, 
some of the IOs that are left on analog I'm using well mixed signal rather I'm using to drive um, control signals like uh, reset for the tiles uh, so low reset and enable which can be used like a power enable my thinking here is really just so that we can power down the tile or set of tiles if we want to go into a low power mode really um, or if we want to hold them in uh, disabled uh, position where we could bring everything else up and then interrupt well that's fairly obvious that goes both to the FPGA and to the um, microcontroller. We've got RX and TX, which I haven't wired out yet. Um, that's also used internally between the FPGA and the um, STM32, so we don't necessarily need to use that, but it can sometimes be useful. Um, the digital pins here, P48 and P49, those are pulled up to LEDs inside the ice core. Um, again, connected to the FPGA, so they can be used. So we are actually using those as an extra two lines on this digital 49 and 48 digital only. And the third one, which is replacing those mixed signals, uh, is the P64 which is the ES um, control pin. Hi Outpost, how are you doing? Hi Laurie. Um, and that ES signal, or P64 signal, which we'll call it for now, um, in fact P64 is a really bad, 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 bad numbering. I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, so that provides us with the third one that we need for the digital only. Um, perhaps we should then mention what we're not using. So the rest of these eight bits we're not using. So there's another six bits here we're not using. Those are actually connected to the SD card on the FPGA. <clears throat> so I'm trying to avoid using those. It is possible that we could wire them. I'll come back around to that in a minute. So in the cases where you're not using the SD card, you could reuse them. Um, and then we have some reserve pins here as well. What we're not using, notice, is the SCK MISO Mozzie, which I used. They're the same SPI pins or signals that are used to actually program the FPGA. Um, so we're not reusing those. I didn't want to wire those around the board because that's just going to lower the frequency. Of our programming and the signal integrity. It's also um, somewhat um, uh, troublesome. So if you wire those out and people use them and put some install something on the board that does something, it pulls the entire system down, which we don't want to do. Um, we've also got SCL and SDA. Those are shared on all the tiles as well. So we've got I squared C there. Um, and that is pretty much all the pins covered from the ice storm. Oh, one thing I've forgotten, the debug pins here. Um, we've got the SWD debug pins, so the data pin, the clock, uh, and the SRST, so that we can, if we necessarily need to, or require resetting the actual STM32, we can do that as well. Um, before these signals were the EN, INTS, and RSTs, um, shared with the debugging but of course if you want to use them then you couldn't do the debugging at the same time which I didn't want to do this time around that's what we have on the uh, current MX carrier so here I freed those up for their real jobs uh, in addition although this is not relevant to um, the um, ice core because we use an ice 40 Uh, we don't need JTAG pins for the FPGA. So these are effectively unused on the uh, uh, 
Huh. These are effectively unused on the um, ice core. But if we were to do a black edge board with ESP5 on, then we'd need to wire these out. Um, and in fact, you see here at the top, I've got a, a like a 10 pin debug connector, which wires out externally to um, for the JTAG pins as well as the SWD pins. And it separates them rather than overlaps them. Um, might need to come back and talk about that because um, that needs tackling as an issue or at least understanding um, but I wanted to wire them out on this board as well so that we can use them um, then this board can be used for a black edge prototype if I wanted to oh, sorry an ECP5 based black edge if I wanted to if I do decide that we're going to do that which I've been playing around with in the last week so um that's the current pin out Ooh. you can use that link that seems to be way out there by itself for some reason so that is the schematic any questions on that schematic by the way oh uh, Larry Griffith says is there a five volt connector on the board Currently, there is not. Um, what would you want to use it for exactly? What are you thinking? Explain where you're coming from on that, Laurie. Have you got a requirement for that? Do you need like five volts on a tile or something? Because I haven't allowed for putting five volts on the tile at this point. I was trying to avoid doing that. And I can go back and justify that. Uh, I use the one on the Black Eyes MX sometimes. For example, a text LCD P mod that needs 5 volt. Text LCD P mod. Um, my intention is not to put them on the tiles. My tile specification does not have five volts. Um, but I could add a five volt connector somewhere on the um, carrier board. If that would help. Or an ADCP mod that needs five volts. An ADCP mod that needs five volts. Yeah, don't forget that the um, the tiles have a separate high power, high current supply. However, you're likely to be running that at higher than five volts. But whatever you run it at, it's common to every tile on the board. So it has to be a voltage that they all support, i.e. not above a certain level. Um, the normal use of that, those those higher voltage high power lines are for you know devices that are likely to be above five volt frankly um yeah if you're driving motors and stuff anything other than really small ones is going to require you know you're often going to go 12 24 36 or 48 volts you know depending on the application um i'm not specifying that voltage here um, I'm leaving that as a choice for the application, so to speak. But I mean, you could use that as 5 volt if you wanted to, if every tile on your board only needed 5 volt, for example. That's the other possibility. Um, so anyhow, let me go into...
uh, this in particular. So if we were to do the black edge version, like an ESP5 black edge version that fits into this very same board, then these reserve pins here, R0 through to R8, could be used. Okay, noted, uh, Laurie. And in fact, let me, must I remember? Right. Let me um, put this down here. Ready for the five volt. <clears throat> so looking here at the reserve, so everything's been used up. So there have been some changes. Uh, you may notice that what used to be MX15 isn't MX15 anymore, it's SWO, which is the extra debug pin, which is available using ITM if that's supported. Uh, not all of the uh, programming things, such as these very low-cost Asian variety, do not support SWO, which is annoying because it's a really good thing to have, particularly if you're doing the Rust stuff, because there's some really good library support for that. Um, that basically, by using the SWO, you get a very low overhead, or you can get a very low overhead uh, debug print out without having to use a UART or any of that. It's all done over the JTAG, sorry, over the SWD. Brilliant, really, really handy. And because we weren't using M MX15, um on ice core it was a spare pin effectively not only that we probably wouldn't use mx15 on a black black edge variant of this as well so um i've designated that swo okay um these r0 to r8 can be anything we like really and I'm wondering how to use these. You know, one possibility was, which I mentioned before, um, low power signals. I've got some spare 1.8 volt signals that I could use, for example, on a black air GCP5 based solution. Um, I could also do something with those signals on the module itself. Um, so I could use them on the module to drive something, perhaps, or I could put them through a buffer so they come out at a different voltage, for example. I don't know. I'm going to throw that out there now. We've got eight pins. What should we do with them? They don't exist on ice core. This is a bonus we get if we were to do a black edge board that fits in here based on an ECP5. What would we use those eight lines for? Please do provide me with ideas. I'll give you to the end of this stream to come up with ideas. If you don't, and we do go ahead doing a um, an ESP5 black edge board, I will find a use for them, guaranteed. But I'd love to hear some feedback from you folks about what possible usage you could have for them. We're a little constrained in what we do with them. So it could be something on the uh, Black Edge board itself, or we could expose them on some sort of connector here that would then give us access. What kind of thing could that be? Um, well, for example, um, just to throw one out there. Uh, Hold on. Okay, hold on just one second.
is a good example which you may recognize the possibility uh, no it's not that one did we do one of these mm, that's probably not going to work maybe we haven't got one here Damn. I throw this idea in anyhow. This probably isn't such a good idea, but it just gives gives you something to think about. Um So if we were to do this, look at that, I'd like that. Um, we can have something such as this here. Yeah. Uh, Oh, it's not a vertical one. It doesn't have a vertical option. I might have to then replace that. So there could be an option here so you, that you could connect a camera through that. Um, there's some trickiness to that because you'd have to install quite a few components. Or there could be a little board that goes on here contains one of those you know something whereby it doesn't require an awful lot of space um, equally you could have something like that that was a display board that's another possibility Or, you know, maybe you just have a tiny little thing in here that will support anything using those eight plus pins. Uh, I say eight plus pins because what we do, um, is as well as these eight, we could use these six. Now, obviously in ice core, these reserve pins aren't used, so it's no use. And obviously we can't use those if we're using SD card. But if it was a black edge board, both of those would be available to us, potentially. Worth considering, right? Um, Laurie's just said something. I you missed it all. It's all right. We're just going through different options. Um, Laurie says, ULX3 has a seven or eight pin header for extra pins that is most often used for an LCD diagnostic display but can be used for any other purposes so what we're talking about I post in case you've um, forgotten is if we did a black edge version um, Uh, we've got an extra eight reserve pins here which we could have IOs on and potentially add these six in as well and the question is what could we use them for should we pin them out I think we should if we wanted to go the route and add an ESP5 black edge option for this carrier um, Yes, yeah, so display purposes is quite an interesting one, I think. However, there may be a problem because I think those eight signals by themselves, as are on a current ECP5 design, would be low powered signals. Um, but I human said I would use them for intercommunications. 
And what would you be intercommunicating with my post? Pray tell. You're talking about joining carriers together or something else. I would like to string FPGAs together for neurons. Okay, right. Um, so what's the best best way of doing that? So I mean, I think those pins could be used as you know low voltage differential signals, for example. Would that be fast enough? They are quite rapid. Or would you be looking at adding some sort of um, transceiver, raw or transceiver? It's a good idea, I post. Neuroncom is extremely slow. Okay, well, these are capable of doing, you know, LVDS. One, one of the benefits of um, LVDS, for example, I post, is that you've got a differential signal. So you can run it over something like, you know, a, a ribbon cable. I don't have any kicking around in the picture. So you could do a ribbon cable between boards. Um, and because it's LVDS, you know, you do get a bit of distance. It used to be used a lot for um, uh, camera work, you know, like um, in astronomy and things like that. So if you had a camera a way away from the board, run, you'd run it over, uh, you know, LVDS, you know, over either one of those miniature high density D types or you know that go to that convert to like an IDC cable or just through straight IDC ribbon cable connectors on each end. Uh, the other thing that you can do with that is you could do um, hold on, I wonder if I've got any here. You could do it right angled, so you could do something like. Just delve into some older parts here. Pretty sure I have some. Just a case of finding it. How many times have I said that to myself? I guess everyone probably said that to themselves. I do have rather a lot of stuff. I swear I've got some of these. Hold on, let me get some visibility from below. Uh, I can see one. I thought I had a bigger one than this. before uh, these aren't shielded you can get shielded ribbon cable but you're better off using twisted pair shielded ribbon cable is a bit inflexible and awkward and you need to do something fairly special with the um, the ends whereas twisted pair is fine don't forget it's an LVDS signal anyhow so all the common noise or most of the common noise gets uh, eliminated so have you seen these before? So it's an IDC cable, but it has these clamps. 
So it clamps on to the IDC cable. So it's nice and firm. This is a vertical one, but you can get them right angled as well. So that would lie on the board like that. And then you could IDC into it. IDC over to your next board and you're away. And they come in all sorts of different sizes as well, these. But with the clamps as well, it's secure, you see, which is quite nice. Well, you could add optical connectors and transceivers, but they're very expensive. And this is simple and robust. And again, as you said, it's not particularly um, high speed. Probably the simplest thing to do. So what you could do is something like that. Um, hold on. We've got Yeah, these. Um, how many signals did we say? Eight. So you probably want at least ten. I mean, this size here is a. This is a ten, ten pinner. Um, so you'd need a minute four pairs plus some ground. So yeah, something like that would do. So if you had something like that connected, it's a good idea, expansion-wise. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then you probably um, what you do with these would depend very much on um, the application, but you could possibly do um, ground, and you might even put something like. Um, Five volts on there as well, so that you could power something on the end of an IDC. So if you wasn't just using it as an interconnect, um, but driving a remote peripheral in some way. Um, then um, that would be quite convenient, I think. Yeah. Let me get rid of this because we don't actually need this one here. It's just for illustration purposes. Let me just go to um, let me just show you the PCB layout, guys, so that you can see what's going on here. There it is. Um, my only criticism, I, I mean, I think I'd probably leave this as a user installed peripheral um, oh. just going to move the debug out of the way for a moment let's just put that there so it probably need to go there I think height wise I don't think it's a problem clearance wise if you look carefully 
Oh, it is actually quite tight. These are actually. Hold on. Oh, this. Hmm. I don't know if there's any choices in terms of um, parts that may have different um, physical heights. Let me just find. Hmm. So are my measuring devices? Where did I put that? Crumbs. Right, let's do it the old fashioned way. I can't find my bloody micrometer. Where have I put it? So that measures approximately. Those are like, looks like. got any bumps on it that is about nine or eight to nine millimeters which is too high um, we've only got a six mil clearance I think Uh, if you use the ones without a clamp it wouldn't be a problem I'm not sure what's available in these it's been years since I bought any of these we used to use these a lot back in the day um, I wonder. You might be able to get these in slightly different heights. It's because of the clamp; it needs to be a bit wide, a bit taller. You see. Uh, yeah, you could use an FPC connector. That's the other possibility. Um, the advantage of going with something like an FPC connector is its surface mounts. Disadvantage with these is they're not surface mount, they are through hole. You can see. Um, so FPC is possible. However, getting lengths of FPC is more difficult. They tend to be shorter, generally speaking. Uh, it's an interesting idea, this. I wonder. You can get the um, 1.27 pitch ribbons as well. However, making the cables up is more difficult. One of the advantages of going with the old-fashioned IDCs is it's really easy to make cables up. Uh, I've got loads of ribbon cable. Uh, not handy, though. In boxes. Hmm. I wonder what the variation is on these. Whether you can get slightly um, narrower ones. Yeah, I mean, you can just use a vise to clamp IDC cables. It's really simple. Um, hmm. The other good thing about having this is it's easy to extract 
cable. So if you look inside, these are actually levers as well. So when you pull them that way, it actually pushes out the um, the connector. I used to love using these. Very convenient. Okay, good idea. Any other ideas, anyone, as well, once we're here? It was a default interconnect, I think, wasn't it? I post IDC ribbons for anything above maybe two or three uh, signals. It can be had at relatively low cost as well, which is nice. But that's not a bad idea, the IDC one. Um, the other possibility is uh, you could have it vertical. So you could do something like. Hold on. Um, on the So you've got a vertical version of the same thing. Yeah. Actually, that doesn't look quite as wide, but so you could have that in here, for example. That's just like one of these. That's fairly easy to put in there and you're not constrained. That's a possibility. Oh yeah, they they it's a Hawaiian name, isn't it? I post for their um, neuromorphic chips. It's meant to be like an ambiguous word or something, isn't it? I'd love to get my hand on those. Have you seen the um, where they stack them? So you can make like a, a billion neurons by using multiple bores linked together. The worst thing about those though, have you ever looked at the chips themselves? They have the most goddamn awful ball array on the bottom that has diagonal triangular fan outs. It's really, really rather odd. 
I'd hate to do a PCB on those. Be a nightmare. Yeah, well, they're, they're trying to expose maximum connectivity, aren't they? It's really interesting what they're doing. I'd love to have a play around. If only I had the time. Um, it'd be interesting to see what they do with the next generation, because that was primarily a research chip aimed at various research organizations, universities, and things like that. Have you got one at your, uh, you, at your uh, college I post? Do you have access to them? I know we're going off at a tangent here. No, wait, you don't you work at a a, a university or something, I post. A banking institution. Oh. Okay. For some reason, I thought you were at uh, some kind of um, American university in Florida. <laughs> well, the banking industry did swallow up our best minds. We are constantly reminded. Stole them from engineering roles. <laughs> University of Florida. Ah, uh, okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go... Oh. No. So to use this, it has to be the vertical one. Any other ideas, folks, either for interconnect or use of those pins? It's our best candidate so far. MIDI. I'd probably do MIDI on um, on a tile. How many pins is MIDI? I can't remember. And does it have to be 5 volt tolerant? If so, it probably belongs on a tile. And then you can put a driver on there to make the signals safe. You know, level shifters, etc. Where does that come from? Damn, I'm running out of tea already. How far in are we? I've nearly been streaming an hour. Um, Laurie, you got any ideas, mate? Oh, you said, didn't you? Like, an LCD diagnostic display was one of the uses on the ULX3. You mentioned. Um, so that would have to be on the um, um, like an FPC connector or something. To do a display, uh, you probably need parallel. How many pins do you need? We looked at this, didn't we, the other week? You need eight data. You need a clock, a select, and then you need a command pin. Then you need a read and write pin. That's right. Read, write, clock, command, four. Twelve pins at least. You can do twelve pins. That'll work. You'd have to use some of the other pins though. Um but that's possible.
one of the big problems with the display one so is um they're not always standard the fpc can out i need to look into it a bit further but i remember when i did look at it in the past they don't always follow the same pin for pin pin out on an fpc or from an fpc point of view you see what i mean I mean, you could put uh, I had those OLEDs, didn't I? Um, hold on a sec. Hold on, I'll get it out. Um, these, oh, I think these are FPCs. Oh no. Let me just get one of these out. I don't know how common these are, I got these a while back. I think these are color OLEDs, very small ones. Damn it, I can't open the damn thing. Oh, these are sealed. Big time. I mean, these are only tiny ones. So that kind of thing. I don't know if you can see the pinouts on there, but so the pinouts on here Yeah, these aren't SPI though, these are like parallel. So what you have is um hold on. I've used one of these before. Bear with me. I may have an FPC um, version. Oh. Oh. I'm just gonna copy this. I don't know if this is so again that just uses like an FPC you could use a vertical one but more importantly if we look at the pinouts these are typical of the pinouts for driving a parallel display so you've got eight data bits You've got um, read and write, and then you've got command data, and then a, a select. Um, the SD is for serial data, so if you're not using the serial data, you're using parallel. I'm trying to remember what S and P is. Maybe it's asynchronous, not synchronous. Maybe there isn't a clock. 
so that would be eight for the data and then um chip select read write that's three and command that's an extra four pins I really wish I I think S and P is really whether you're serial or parallel so that just gets fixed so this has similar on the FPC connector on the back and then this breaks it out into the headers on the top which is um, That's a 16 pin header on the top of that. This one. I don't know if that sort of thing's standard at all. So that's another possibility. That requires like 12 pins, doesn't it? Minimum. So that's a possibility. Let me just check the comments here. Um, yeah, eight data CS read write. Um, simple one for diagnostics for new serial. Yeah. Just looking at my homemade MIDI P mod. It does not have five volt and only has one pin connected as it was just the input for a keyboard hmm I wonder yeah interesting but I think there's quite a few um, displays that have a power output um, so yeah, you could have a 16 pin, you know, header on here. They could just be user pins. Just put a, just put a header there. For all of the spare pins, you know, um, and then you could use them as you wish. Hold on. I tell you what. Actually, if you were going to do that, something that's really, really, really useful. Yes 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 so what you do is you'd add in so what are we talking about uh, eight eight possibly eight plus six 14 signals let's say so what you could do is you could put in a connector This wouldn't work with the IDC ID base. Well, uh, hold on. Something like this. Oops. 
that way for the moment. Uh, switch back to turn schematic off. And I'm going to get rid of this. So you could just have a set of header pins in an IDC uh, case. So what I mean by that is, um, oh, what's that? Oh, really chip that I've like forgotten about. Hmm. Basically, like these again, IDC types, you could polarize them as well. So, that enables you to put things like the dew point wires on them if you want and take them, have your wicked way with them. Um, What I was thinking, what this is really good for um, is test pins. One of the great things about working with the um, with FPGAs is you can take any signal and you can route it out to a pin on the FPGA. And then you can do pumps into your logic an analyzer. Even better still, if you wire it, let me switch back. So if you do something like this, hold on. So if this was a connector, you could do right, hold on. We need a much larger one. We will need, hold on, how many we've we got here? Got up to what? Six to five, 14, 28. Hmm, isn't the 28, of course. Uh, we want power on there as well. Let's just use this temporarily. So, 26 pin version, right? I'm just going to bodge this really quickly. It's going to be ugly as heck, but it's a great way of um, bodging it. And then what you do on the other side is you go tie them all together, 
to improve your signal integrity and take them down to the grounds. Look at that, fits perfectly. Um, yeah, I have thought about that, Laurie, uh, but getting the dimensions right is, um, it's not going to work, unfortunately, this, you physically can't fit it in, in this situation. i tell you what I was thinking of is there was a possibility that you could make a board that does that for the amalgam. And the black stack that's where you can do it and you you, you need a few more pins than we've got as well because you need two lots of eight so you need 16 and we've only got 12 here so this could work and that's really useful I do that a lot um, so for example if I can turn this on Hold on. Yeah, you'd be needing to plug this in, I think. Well. I yeah, can't seem to um, see that camera for some reason. Don't quite know why that is. Anyhow, so um, this card changes. So. Um, I mean, you've seen me use what, what I normally use um, when you see me running the other stuff here is I use the PMOD extender in between two things and then I hook the kind of DuPont cables on and take those to the logic analyzer. But if you do something like this here with it grounded on one side, that can go to an IDC cable which can plug directly into. A logic analyzer. I mean, you'd need a special cable because, say, I'm using the Sale that has uh, my one's only an eight, it's a pro, but it's only eight. So basically, I could take eight of these, and then what you do is you split the IDC into smaller ones because on the um, Sale it's not one continuous long one, it's all done in blocks of four I think so uh, and on the top you have the four signals and then four grounds and then another connector four signals and four ground 
but that's easy to do on an IDC cable because basically you just use a four cable and then you just split off the four each time or oh, sorry not the four the eight because you've got four grounds on each and then I'll put an IDC cable on each end boom and it goes straight into the Sailey no messing about with these unreliable DuPont cables because they are flimsy as hell once you've used them for a bit they expand so they don't go onto the headers properly so you get intermittent connection problems and you get one that's shorter than the other and can't reach and it pulls the other one out you, you just end up with something that's very um, Heath Robinson and not very stable whereas if you can use an IDC solution that's good um, and then you don't need to rewire every time you just plug it in um, and then you just use your you know Verilog or whatever or Mmigen to route the signals to the particular pins that you want to the particular channels in the logic analyzer same goes for if you're using something like a um, you know logic analyzer or oscilloscope they have a similar thing like an IDC input or something many of the uh, logic analyzers analyzers even the low cost ones use um, IDC compatible connectors and inputs um, yeah so on that front Laurie I mean I agree I've been thinking about that anyhow but I can only do it on amalgam because you need 16 pins to do the um, um, uh, Glasgow connector so you, what you need to do is have two um, tiles side by side and then you can put the headers on there plus you need the level shifters on the board as well Um, so I post saying that raises an interesting idea have a series of boards that expose different connector types maybe even interchangeable yeah I mean you can do that with tiles as well of course I think having the IDC connector there is good I think that works it makes it accessible Now obviously that's only useful, well I was going to say it's only useful if you use like a Black Edge ECP5 board because um, that's what got the extra pins. But if you're not using the SD card on the iStorm, six of those are available to you, which is better than nothing. I mean it's the kind of thing that you could have the connection for there and supply it so that people could solder it in themselves for example I like it it's a good idea and it also doesn't matter if those signals happen to be a lower voltage if you're outputting those to a logic analyzer because the logic analyzer can often handle different voltages So kind of test slash expansion pins. I like that. And it fits in nicely size wise. Very good. That's the best idea yet. It's kind of um, a compromise idea between all the other ideas that we've had. Can we think of anything better than that? Oh, I'm so hungry this evening. I think I'm short on energy. I'd really like to get this board finished. I just have to route the signals more or less. I mean, I should tidy this up. That's why you guys are having a think. It's kind of ugly like that.
Can we just move this? Do it proper. Just cleaning up schematic boats while you look at that. So iPost is asking, curious, what would be the maximum frequency on the shortest path to a connector? To a connector pin, which are you talking about on the tile or are you talking about that connector that we just added for test? Right, that's a bit less ugly. You might want to add some power pins on it as well, possibly. Okay, so for tile pins it will vary um it'll be the ones with the 
um, shortest path probably so it would be like this tile so I was thinking of doing like a HDMI tile oh I said the words what I actually meant was a digital video tile that has a digital video connector on it So that could go here, and that's a really short path because it's connecting onto this this head that's coming down from the black edge from the ice storm or black edge. It can be quite fast. You know, you could you could push 100 megahertz through it, maybe a couple of hundred megahertz. It depends on how resilient the signal is. And whether you're using differentials or not. But certainly, you know, 100 megahertz, maybe more. For some of the tiles that are further, then probably signal integrity isn't quite as good. If he's using differential, you could probably rock it a bit faster. She'd have better common mode rejection. Does that give you, or does that help you? Um, I post. Will all the tiles be connected at the same time? Yes. Whether they're used or not, uh, tracks will go to the um, connectors on the board on the carrier. So you could do a lot of uh, radio receivers. One on each pin, if you wished. They're probably not brilliant antennas, but you know. I don't know if there are any uh, filter selections on inside the FPGA. I don't think there are. I know you've got high and low speed on the STMs, for example, which can be useful for cutting down the noise. Basically, there's you know a, a filter that's added. Um, or you could put a terminating tile on there that does nothing other than pull them down like a 15 ohm, 100 ohm terminator 100 ohm is probably more sensible than 50 ohm it's more characteristic of the impedance that you're likely to see on the IO lines um, you know an easy way to do that is use going to do a proto tile just like we have proto p mods so you can solder your own stuff on um i do have an ethernet tile on the list Da, da, da. I actually had a P mod design. Why is that not focusing? Um, so I've been um, porting this onto a tile format. I've got the components to make a, a few of these based around the um,
I just found some hyper ram. Not that was what I was looking for. Okay, it's not in that box. That's what it was. <clears throat> Can I get it out recently? It's, I'm trying to remember the number, is it the 9270? Lamb, it's um, microchip. Damned if I can remember. That's what it looks like, roughly. Not finished yet. Um, oh, sorry, LAN eighty-seven ten. So Lloyd's saying for the Ethernet on the ULX three S, we use the LAN. 8720. I don't know what the difference is between the 8710 and 8720 is. It's 100 megabit. More than adequate. Yeah, this is RM2 as well. It, it won't take much to change it from the... Um, 8720 to 8710. I can't imagine there's that much difference between the two. They're actually the same family, but there might be some subtle differences. But the differences may be M2 differences as opposed to RM2, because RM2 is pretty straightforward. So, whilst I've got this up, actually, um, one of the things I was thinking of is putting a, um, a Wi-Fi module on this. So this tile is capable of doing Ethernet and Wi-Fi. What do you think about that as an idea for a tile? This is like a network tile. I just figured if you're doing the network stuff, then you could add the Wi-Fi on there as well. Not sure which uh, Wi-Fi adapter to use. I mean, that's the old um, ESP12 type, 12E, 12F type thing. I don't know if it's best to go with that or maybe go with one of the newer ones. They do a RISC one, don't they? RISC-V version now, C3 version. And you get these mini, oh, what are they called? Um, yes, I 
think I've got a library part for this, so you can use um, what are they called? So C3 Mini, for example. If you were to use one of these, there's an awful lot of connectors on here. Maybe overkill. But um, the only reason I'm thinking this is it might be advantageous from a future point of view. They look like this. So that would go there. Slightly smaller. There's a lot more pins on it. Put it there. Um, oh, it's because it's off the board, right? That would go kind of there. Probably shove the Ethernet a bit that way as well. No, it says ESP boards don't have Linux kernel drivers. They don't work well with Saxon stock. Really, I'm surprised. There's no uh, Linux driver for ESPs. Hmm. Um, there are a lot of Chinese ones. Hold on. Um. Yeah, I don't know much about the state of the Wi Fi drivers in Linux to know what the what the common ones are i bet there's a plethora of choices but you probably have to buy them in quite large volumes um the only other possibility i was thinking is if you use something like an esp um 32 or c3 you could also whack on a rom or something there and run um, MicroPython on it. So you've got a kind of communication coprocessor. I mean, you may as well use it if it's on there. Delu1990 got a SPI Wi-Fi board working with Linux. I can't remember which one. Yeah. But do you get my point about maybe using ESP because you could then run MicroPython on it or whatever. So rather than it just being a Wi Fi point, it could actually do some communication processing when you're using Wi Fi. At least offload some of that processing. Given that the process is there anyhow. So Saxon Sock works well with ESP32 MicroPython via PGTD. Yeah, I was thinking of something perhaps a bit more elegant than that. I want to connect it over 
the pins we've got left on the tile that we've not used are um, SPI, basically. So it has to be an SPI based Wi Fi solution. Anyhow, bit of a distraction. So yeah, I am working on a network tile that looks something like this. Um, the only thing I haven't worked out yet is the Wi-Fi bit. Whether I should have the Wi-Fi bit, and if so, what Wi-Fi bit? Yeah, I'm not thinking too much about Linux. Um, that's less important here, frankly. I'm really surprised that you can't get Linux drivers that support ESP32. That seems odd to me. I'm sure people have knocked them up. Maybe they're just not part of the kernel or something. You know, they're off the beaten track somewhere. I'm sure people have done it before. What Wi-Fi does uh, Raspberry Pi use? They do the chip directly, don't they? They don't use a module. Anyhow, let me just switch back to... Uh, oh, let me save that. Um, switch back to... Where were we? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Back on here. So... I think let's just go back. So I like I like the look of that. I think that's nice. I think we definitely want to go that way. That makes me feel good inside. Um, let's put my debug connector back here. I was going to talk about the debug, wasn't I? Okay. So here's the thing. Um, let's switch to the schematic. It's easier to see the signals. So this is a debug connector here, right? Um, uh, turn the layout off. Why wouldn't you want to run Linux on your ECP5 board? Uh, I personally wouldn't want to run Linux. But people are free to do so. It's just um, the reason that I wouldn't do it generally is that it's highly inefficient way of doing anything. Um, other than doing it for fun, if it ever came to a practical application, I would never do that. A, because you're running on a soft core, which is highly inefficient in the FPGA. Um, B, you've got rather limited resources. A real-time operating system is going to give you much better performance. But, you know, that's just me and what I work on, right? The kind of things I do. So, yeah. If you're into Linux, then it's entirely different. Um, I'll tell you what I was thinking of, though, on this subject before we get back round to... Um, Debug, don't let me forget. Is fine, you know, I, I keep banging on about using heterogeneous, right? I.e. using the von Neumann inside the STM32 and then the FPGA for the more harder real-time stuff. One of the things I thought would be quite interesting is getting Linux to run on the STM32. The biggest problem, right, I think you can run micro Linux because it doesn't need an MMU, right? If I remember rightly. But given that we have a wider, faster bus going into the FPGA from the STM32, can we kind of do an MMU thing? 
inside the FPGA. I don't know enough about that stuff to see if that even makes sense. Because don't forget, you got a cache in the H7 as well, or the F7. But that will be able to run Linux much faster, I believe. Although I'd be worried about memory bandwidth, possibly. So you'd have local SRAM that's very fast. Then you have the secondary DDR2 RAM that you access over the FMC bus through the FPGA. Could you fit the MMU in there somewhere? I'm not so good on, not so hot on that stuff to know whether that would actually be feasible. Um, but at least then you're running the von Neumann part on something that's designed to do that. Because whenever you do that on the in, inside the FPGA, you're not making best use of what you've got. If you've got that big von Neumann, you know, hardcore next year, right? Anyhow, one to think about on the Linux front. Background to where we were. So, debug. So, here's the issue. So, it's not a problem on the ice core. The only thing you have to worry about on the ice core is the SWD connections. In particular, the only ones you're interested in are these three here at the bottom. Um, SWD, the data, the clock and a reset and you can connect you know something as simple as one of these I've got a bunch of these if anyone needs one let me know and send you one out not the same as this one but you know low-cost Chinese Asian slash knockoff ST link um, so from an ice core point of view it's easy because that's all you need to drive you don't have a JTAG on the lattice ice range however if we do a black edge board with an ESP5 on it that has JTAG so um, if you look at this here we've got the JTAG in addition to the SWD stuff mm, that was the wrong one that we can wire through on here The TMS, TDO, TDI, TCK. So all of those then go to this debug header, which you can see here. Now, normally, if you look at a JTAG programmer, take for example my J link, right? Or oh, take for example the lattice easy to use if you look at the lattice JTAG right if you look at the connectivity on there uh, this doesn't support SWD of course so it's just for like lattice chips Um, but what you find on these, I don't think my um, J link has the pinouts on the box. Hold on. Hmm. But what you find, yeah, it doesn't doesn't have the pinouts on there. Um, that's most of the JTAG programmers support both JTAG, well, the ST links don't, but if you look at a proper JTAG programmer, not a knockoff, it will have JTAG support and it will have a SWD support, but the SWD pinouts 
overlap they're on the same pins as the, as the regular JTAG pins so if you want to debug both the STM32 and the um, ESP5 concurrently you've got a problem Houston because it's one or t'other um, so I expose them separately here so I'm not following the standard overlapping connections because I want to be able to debug these separately now what that may mean temporarily is using two JTAGs which is awkward but um, I did mention probably in my last stream um, I'm exploring the possibility of doing my own um, DAP link supporting debug tool um, but one of the things that I could do on this and I'm, I'm considering a few other interesting things that most of these debug tools don't do uh, is I could do the JTAG and the SWD at the same time um, and that would be interesting so if I can get that working and I will be able to test it if we do a black edge board for this on this connector so that then works I'm actually thinking of adding that into the amalgam board directly which is a bigger board or differently um, arranged board so um, yes so it's a bit of a problem and the other thing that you notice on here is you've got the SWO as well which is the output for the ITM output which enables you to have a kind of debug log printf type output that comes over the debug side of things so it doesn't require UART which is great for debugging because if you require the UART how do you debug the UART right um, particularly if your UART is using DMAs and interrupts and god knows what out so uh, that's good as well now we don't have that on ice storm because we didn't expose that pin but on the black edge ECP5 variant if we do it we will most definitely have that I've made sure of that in the current design so this is an interesting feature um, also when you're doing this from inside rust and I know this isn't everybody's cup of tea there's some quite good work that's been going on out there to build in support for some of this stuff um, which we can hook into which is quite exciting so we can do some quite interesting tooling on the software side on the host etc that works with this um, it's very efficient and um, much more useful than the straightforward you know these things okay I post enjoy I don't know if we'll still be going by the time we come back we'll see um, so yeah I just wanted to cover that debug side because that's an important part of it for me anyhow I mean I know, I know a lot of people don't really use debug tools and stuff but believe you me um, they can really get you out of trouble <laughs> really get you out of trouble sometimes you know i've been in situations trying to work out what on earth is going on um and you can't use you know your printfs and things to find out you know sometimes you need to go in there and hack up registers and do all sorts of stuff to try and locate what's going on you know particularly if you get these heisen bugs so uh yeah having good debug i think is nice so that would be better obviously for the black edge version you know or an ecp5 version that would definitely be good so i'm including that 
if we go black oak. I mean, the connectors are there anyhow. So. Right, uh, what's next on here? So I think we've used all our pins up, haven't we? Have we left any? Okay, we've got our SPI pins, the SCK, my zone, was he? I need to update those. Get rid of those M terms. Um, I can do that now. Nice, I remember. <clears throat> no worries. I have mainly used JTAG on FPGA pins to Saxon shock. I haven't had to use it directly to the ECB 5 port. Yeah, well, I haven't used JTAG a lot with um, FPGAs, more with um, microcontrollers, to be fair. <clears throat> but there are things you can do over JTAG. So for example, you can go and do things like border scans. Border scans mean that you can go and interrogate any pin to see what its state is, for example. Plus you can go and poke around on the internal registers of the um, ESP5. I think you can even poke around in the memory and do all sorts of stuff. So it is a useful tool. Um, I was just thinking of something when you said that and I've forgotten what it is now. Oh yes, what you said. Um, you, when you're using JTAG in Saxon Sock, so you're just using some standard pins that then get connected to a JTAG connector, right? Because that's the internal JTAG connection to your soft core or whatever, or to your bus. So, remember, we've just added, um, hold on, just added this beauty, the EXT, you could route those JTAG pins onto that, provide you a nice, um, Convenient connector for your JTAGs. So those pins could be used as test or as JTAGs. That would only work on the ice storm. Sorry, ice storm. On the ice core, if you weren't using the SD card, obviously. But on a black edge ECP5, then you could use any of them, I guess. There's another good reason to have it there. Yay! So it's good. So the only ones that we haven't root, haven't um, connected up are the spy pins. Now those are the internal connections, the internal spy connection between, in Ice Core's case, between the STM32 and the FPGA, and <laughs> the flash because they're overlapping. 
which we won't be doing, I don't believe, on the um, SP5. Um, I don't think there's any point in pinning these out because the, the only thing that will be useful would be if I needed to examine the pins from a diagnostic point of view. It wouldn't be any use to a user, I don't think. I mean, they could be used, but you've got to remember that it's connected to the FPGA and the flash, and you don't want to interfere with that operation. It's already complicated enough on the ice stone, ice core. I said it again. Hmm. This connector here could be wider. I wonder how big we could go. What's the next one up? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I probably want to make these surface mount as well. Oh no. Do I? Hmm. Possibly. Uh, uh -huh. Hold on. What's that? It's a 26, 30 is the next one up. I'm using the wrong one here. Uh, con parts, isn't it? Are we looking at twenty six thirty? I'm going to do a thirty four. 34, that seems unusual to me. Hmm. Laurie's saying on the Black Ice MX Carrier you have TX and RX pins on the header. I have sometimes used those. Yes, yeah, a good point. So if we wanted to add, say, the SPI and TX and RX, we'd need another few pins, wouldn't we? Um, but I guess the question is, do we put them on the test header? Or the EXT header? Or do we put them on um, the debug header? Hmm. Um, 34 pin. Now, I'm just going to look at what size a 34 pin is. I'm not even sure 34 would fit. Might be a little too wide. Oh, crikey. We all draw horses. It might just fit, you know. It's very close. Let's move that off for a sec. Five. 
Ooh, yeah, we could go up to a 34. Let me just show you guys, sorry. And girls. Focus. So yeah, you could go up to a 36 pin connector. If we say wished, which would enable us to fit in the extra the extra um, pins. Hold on. I remember. So what did you want on there? The SPI wasn't useful really, was it? But UX and TX might be. So let's put those on. Uh, TX. Rx. Um, we've got another one. What could we use for the other one? It's just a spare at the moment. I used SPI on Black Eyes 2 for connection to Raspberry Pi. Yes, but you need more than the spy. You need you need a chip select and some others as well. That sounds to me like a job for a tile rather than on here. But yeah, I get your point. Um, I'm trying to avoid using those SPIs. I know what we could use. We could put power on it. So what do we put? Do we put 5 volt on there? Dodgy. Dangerous. Okay, let me switch back now. So what? Hold on, let me get this layout up. Here. So that's what I'm thinking now. So this is the 34 pin version. As you can see, what I've added here is RX TX and the and 5 volt. Because you said you needed 5 volt. I was wondering whether we should put 3 volt 3 on there, but Might not necessarily be in that order. I might want to rearrange the order, but yeah, you get the picture. Mm. What do you think? Have the five volt on there? Oh, I hear a pussy cat coming in. Hello, Twinks. What you up to? Come for some more of your supper. Hmm. More suppers. Do you want some biscuits? Oh, me a sec, folks. 
Um, use this as a um, comfort break, actually, because I need to put my electric on the book.
Hello, we are back. Ah, oh, I bet you want to go out now, don't you, Twinks? We're right here. Um, yeah, just putting some bits away. Catching up on what Laurie's saying here. Just, just, I just open these. Where did I put the damn things? That's why I can never find anything. I leave them lying around. Half the time. There we go. I <sighs> must remember to do a tile for these actually. Because I've got them. So, what's Laurie saying? Sent V is on a similar header on the MX carrier. For some reason you have two 5 volt pins. Black ice, ice core, P mod, pin out. Diagram. If I click on that, it's going to open my browser. I'm trying to avoid. Hold on, hold your horses. I'm going to run it. It's going to open about a million tabs. Start a whole load of videos, probably. Um, yeah, let's have a look. Um, what are you saying? Pivot is on a similar header on the MX carrier. For some reason, you have two five volt pins. Oh, I see what you mean. On the um, one here, these ones you're referring to. All. <coughs> Why do I have two? That is a very good question. Let's have a look at. I can't remember off the top of my head. If we go to um, Oh, I've got so many tabs open. My goodness. Nice call. Back edge. I need to go to black edge. I need to go. Yeah. Black Ice MX. Uh, yeah, I really can't remember off the top of my head. So. Let me have a look at the schematic. Uh, 
Oh. I think it was to be compatible with the old uh, Raspberry Pi. So I think the old Raspberry Pi had that. Yeah, this pinout is compatible with the Raspberry Pi 26 pin header. Uh, let me just turn the browser on so everybody can see what it is that we are talking about. Come on. Is it going to pick it up? No, 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 no. There. That's the schematic diagram of the black ice. Uh, and what uh, Laurie was talking about is this connector here, which is a 26 pin connector, male connector that comes out the bottom. Depending which way up you've got it, Dishwood. Here. Um, and that is a 26 pin connector which was compatible originally with the 26 pin version of Raspberry Pi. That goes back years, that was on the original Mystorm board. It's funny, you know, it's like inheritance, isn't it? You know, it's in the genes of this particular board. This one, because the other thing that you could do there that was quite interesting was you could um, you could you could use um, SWD in this or um, we also had the TCK, TDI, TDO, TMS pins mapped out on that as well, even though they weren't used on the ice core. I do hope I've got them around the right way. And also you could program it from the Raspberry Pi, I believe, in the early days. I don't think you can on this version because the chip select here is not the one that's used for programming. That's just connected in this case to ES which is a secondary one but the earlier versions the earlier versions of black ice like black ice 2 etc had um how can we help you twinkle had um, a mux on the spi so you could switch between the raspberry pi as a device for programming it or the STM32, if I recall. Testing my memory now. <sighs> Back in a sec. Cat wants to go out. Don't you? I can tell.
Um, had to let the cat out of the front. We've got, um, had the same thing last year actually. We have a lot of foxes where we live and um, they take a liking to our garden. So when the mum has her cubs, which they tend to do every spring, she had three last year, she had three this year. Apparently she had four, so her neighbours were telling me. But I've only ever seen three of them. One of them probably copped it because she can't feed four, but she can probably feed three. Anyhow, they play around in my garden. It's unbelievable. Um, we still got a slide there from when the kids were young. And they were playing on the slide. Even this is about midnight. I was trying to get to sleep, and all I could hear were these foxes jumping up and down on this slide, chasing each other. It's like one of those plastic ones that so vibrates like mad. It's really noisy. So I tend to prefer to let the cat go out the front rather than back, so it doesn't, you know, start some kind of wild animal war or something. Start getting there, probably get arsy with the cubs, but mummy would soon pop up and then there'd be trouble. So, um, yeah, what was I saying? Oh, yes, so yeah, in those days we had um, the choice of either using SPI to program and communicate with the uh, ICE 40 or the STM 32. Um, some people did it, but not, not many. So, in the end, that kind of got. You know, um, how how could we put it? Deprioritized. Um, I mean, it would be possible to repeat that connector on the tile board on the black tiles whatever it's going to be called rather than just have the straightforward debug connector um, However, the dung connect, dump pin can't be connected to anything on here. Is that a mistake? There is no dung pin. I don't take it off the ice core. Oh, yeah. So it's not actually connected to anything anyhow. But is there any real benefit to having something that's Pi compatible on the front? I mean, obviously, it means you can use your Raspberry Pi to debug the SWD and JTAG, potentially, if you don't have a, you know, JLink or a JTAG. I don't know what you think about that, folks. It's easy enough to add. I don't know how many people use it, frankly. Uh, I mean, I used it, but not to connect to Raspberry Pi. It's just my way of connecting, you know, the um, ST Link, cheapo ST Link, using DuPont cables onto the uh, onto that connector. I'm not sure that it's that useful. Be good to I'm just thinking what the implications of doing that would be. I'm not even sure if it looks good. I mean, it could be good from a compatibility point of view, but I don't know. I don't know. But good point. 
Thanks for bringing it up, um, Nori. Hmm. Yeah, I remember thinking about this a little while back and thinking I wanted to move away from that, but I can't remember why, whether there was a practical reason for doing so or not. Ha having it um, Raspberry Pi compatible means you can just use an IDC cable, I think, if I remember rightly between the Raspberry Pi and the, um, in this case, Black Ice MX. Mm. Yes, might have a little think about that. Um, anything else anyone can think about on this front? Um, what haven't I covered? Um, Okay, right, let me, um, um, well, ty uh, Laurie's asking what tiles I'm planning. Okay, let me see if I can list these. Obvious one, a stepping, basic stepping, um, hold on. Basic DC motor um, tile that's also capable of driving um, single and half step low current steppers, which I already showed. Um, that's probably the oldest one. I think we did that one first. That was like two or three weeks ago. Um, there's the triple axis. Trinamic stepper controller tile, which is a high performance 256 micro step per channel, and that has um, three step channels like an XYZ plus potentially three uh, end stop inputs on it. It also has SPI. Don't know what else I could put in there on that. There's not, not much room on that. Let me um, remind myself where I am with that again. I need to finish some of these. Open, 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 open. Where was that triple axis stepper? So, yeah, that's not quite done yet. Let me show you where we are. Let me get rid of the browser first. And yeah, schematic's pretty up here at the moment. Yeah, I've got some routing issues here still because I'm trying to get the end stops in sensible positions. So these here, uh, one, two, three motor controllers. And then this, these here, this one, this one, this one, a vertical uh, end stops. I mean, they can be used as general purpose IO. They can even be used for analog if it's in an analog slot. Um, uh, 
I need to fiddle about with the routing here so it doesn't interfere with the holes on this. Can we climb it? Build your horses. Build your horses. Can I? Yeah. I, I do need to change this around. It's because I've moved the holes on the time. Um, oh, sorry. My bad. There you go. Help if you could actually see it, folks. So that's the triple axis trinamic microstepper. So, um, motor connector one, motor connector two, motor connector three, and then three end stop connectors, potentially. Um, there's a bit more to go on here. Um, I'm not using the SPI pins at this point. Yeah, this board needs updating more. Oh, yeah. Change the bits and send. So I've got a few pins um, that I can do things with on this. Although I don't have much room left on the tile, frankly. And this speed shifting up a bit, you notice. Strange gear. So it fits in a bit better. Yeah, nearly there. Gonna play about with that a tad. Not quite there yet. Close, but no cigar. Um what else have I got? Uh yeah. Uh I'd like to do a brushless DC motor one, which I haven't really started on. Um Ethernet, which I mentioned earlier. Probably with Wi Fi, probably ESP32 of sorts. Um, the camera one, parallel camera one, which we uh, worked on, was that last week or week before? I think it was last week. I think you already mentioned that one, haven't you? Um, we're thinking of a keyboard breakout one. We'll come back round to that in a second. I want to do the prototype one, which is like a patch one, which is just like the Proto P mods, only it's a bit bigger, so you can fit more in them, which is kind of cool. It's nice. Um, I'll do a breadboard one as well. Uh, the breadboard one will basically not attach onto a breadboard. It will have one of those little black breadboards that fits on it. That's the convenient way of doing it on here. Um, I was wondering about Bluetooth as well. Again, park that one, come back. Oh, a digital video one. With a <coughs> connector on it. The unmentionable name, connector on it. So that uh, you could have digital video out. 
Next, you want Molotar. That's on my list at the moment. So the questionable ones there are things like keyboard breakout and Bluetooth. Oh, LCD one. You're quite right. I could do an LCD one as well. Um, and the LCD one could be parallel or um, or serial, I'm guessing. But we need to find a common pinout that's going to work for a number of different displays. I don't know if going FPC would be the right thing to do there or pinout wise. I don't know. What's your suggestion, Laurie? Apparently LCD displays are a bit more difficult to get at the moment, TFTs and stuff. You can still get OLEDs, but TFTs are uh, in short supply. So I heard. I haven't tried to buy any myself, so I don't know. Um, so whilst you're thinking about that, I, 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 I listed on my um, little notepad, hi post, um, a keyboard tile, which just has like a matrix with a bunch of keys on it, given your talk about buttons the other day. I mean, what you could do is, on a digital tile, for example, you could have up to, let me think, you could have up to, how many IOs have we got on a digital tile? We've got three, six, eleven. Well, you could have a lot. You could do a numeric keypad. It'd be a bit small. You could have a mega button pad. You could fit like um, 25 buttons on fairly easily on a digital pad. Uh, only 16 on an analog pad. Maybe one with cap type buttons. Yeah, so that's, that's possible. I'm going to list that. Add it to my notes. Good idea. My post. The only reason I'm talking about. Um, oh! Is buttons is because uh, Laurie was going on about them the other day as well, not having enough. Uh, Laurie just said, I ended up using four physical buttons and an on screen display. Yeah, I was thinking we could do kind of like a little button grid, or you could even use keyboard switches like cherry ones. I'd probably get the low profile ones though, because that voice is just going to stick up like a mile. But you can get those um, tactile ones that are not very high. And you could easily do a 4x4 four four or a 5x5 five five array of those. But fitting them all onto a tile might be a challenge. Well, you couldn't fit that many on because they'd be too big for the regular keyboard keys. If there were the kind of little push button ones, you could fit that many in. But those aren't quite as nice. And why would you want that many? Frankly, I guess what you could do is maybe combine a smaller number of keys and a rotary encoder. That'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? So you have a tile, and on it you have a bunch of keys and a rotary encoder. You could use that for all sorts of different things. 
you know you could use it to manipulate uh, an on a screen display if you didn't have you know things yeah I mean if it's an analog um, tile then you could add a slider or two in you could have three sliders on a, on an analog tile you like a little mixing if you can find the right size ones that fit onto tile I'm going to put that down good idea I'm also interested in old kit computers like I don't know what that is for them. Um, you could do kind of retro. Oh, yes. What's that? The Kim. Is that based on the Kim? Yeah, Kim 1. Um, I learned uh, on something. I, what, did it, what was it? 6502. That was very similar to this. Uh, the keypad was actually a bit better. Not much better, but a bit better. And it didn't have an edge connector. It was a bit more robust than this. It was designed for education, but I'm damned if I remember what it was called. I've never seen a picture of it since. Um, those use those standard keyboards. You you can buy those, and you just drive it by um, column and um, row. How many's on there? So you've got one, one, two, three, four, four. So you've got the 16 alphanumerics, and then you've got an extra um, 8. So yeah, you could do that from one tile, one of those keypads. The keypad itself I don't think would fit in because it's a bit too big, but you can get the, those kind of keypads with a ribbon cable on them. Or FPC cable, and that itself could then connect to the um, tile as another possibility. Um, as for retro tiles, well, the obvious one is things like um, game controllers, but they are fairly bulky. Um, the game controller connectors. Um, fitting them on the tile is quite difficult. One of the ideas I had that I thought may be a better way of adding game controller things is have them over USB C connector because you could have a USB C connector that had the extra pins. enough pins to do a traditional game console and then basically use a USB-C cable between the uh, core board and another board that has the adapters on it big connectors and then a USB-C cable in between One of the tiles that I did want to do was like an educational tile, which was, um, in fact, I called it like an FPGA 101. So on that, you have um, oh, that was weird. Did I disconnect? Um, so what was I thinking? The FPGA 
Mm, let me show you my browser so that everyone else can see what we were talking about. Apologies. So, um, so for the digital slots, you could do a like FPGA 101, like educational tile. And on that tile, I've put uh, a seven segment display, three digits, um, VGA connector, you know, with a digital DAC resistor ladder, and maybe an audio connector. I was going to do three digits rather than four because I've already got the um, already got them um, now I want to use what I've got first um, hmm. Like that. So seven segment like that, and that, you know, PGA, maybe a audio type jack. That combination. This is a carrier that. You may not be aware of that I made. I used it for educational purposes. This accepts an ice storm. Sorry, an ice core. Uh, no, it's not iPost. I never made any, apart from my prototypes. And in fact, the latter prototype also had USB-A uh, on them. But I can put the same things on the tile. So, um, Indeed. Well, I want to do it as a educational or FPGA 101 tile anyhow, Laurie. It'd be great for uh, workshops and tutorials and people to get started. Um, could do like an educational bundle as well for some folks. Sometimes colleges approach me about that sort of stuff. Um, what was I going to say? Um, damn, got them now. Or is it another tile that I'd thought of? What was it? I mean, you could always do like an LED tile as well, but those are difficult. You know, where you have like a Charlie Plexed set of LEDs. They're a pain in the ass. Especially assembling them yourself. They take hours. Vote for a Russian old part style. You know, the ones declassified. <laughs> well, you'd have to have um, Nixie tubes on them. 
some funky stuff like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> and of course, anyone can make tiles as well. It's not just down to me, of course. Um, damn, I'm sure there was another one I thought of, and I've forgotten. And it's not on my list. Oh, the other thing we mentioned, I should make a note of, shouldn't I? <sighs> what was it? Um, the Glaswegian tile. <laughs> Definitely. It has to be a double one, though, really. There's no easy way of doing it. Um, for the current layout. Because you need twice as many IOs as is on one tile. I can't remember what the... Um, let me just remind myself. Bear with me. Uh... What were the connectors? Were they 16 pin IDCs? Oh, I always do that. It's crowd supply, isn't it? They have problems sourcing all the parts for this as well. So yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Ten. So what? What else is on there? I don't have the schematic in front of me. There we go. Um. Two one zero. What's at the end? Five volts. Wait a minute, is that not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? What is that? Is that a B? There we go. Oh, voltage sense. You could do that with the ADC, but you'd have to put a potential divider in there in case it was like 5 volts. The, the only problem with doing it is you have to add the level shifters as well. These are a bit cumbersome, but it can be done. Um, can you remind me? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 on each size. There's NCs at one end, so, but the connector wise, it's, uh, it's a 20 pin, 20 pin. Let me just see what that would look like, how much space it takes. I don't know what the distance is between them. No dimensions on any of these. Um, let me just go back and browse off for a second. Uh. 
Um, no. Right, so what did I say? Twenty ten, don't we? So Glasgow tie, Glaswegian tie, tile. See, this is the issue you've got with the dimensions. How you fit that in? It's unlikely to fit on this spacing. And these are through holes. I mean, unless you you could get a um. SMD version of the connector rather than the through hole. So it would take up two tiles. I don't know what the distance is between them. But yeah, you'd have to take up two tiles here. Yeah. yeah. With these two connectors. I'm using through hole ones here, which will be problematic uh, but you could use surface mount versions I guess but you need the two tiles a because of the distance between these two things or I don't know what the distance is actually I mean it might fit on one tile but you need 16 pins um, Hmm. But it would fit. Physically, it would fit on a double tile. It may look a bit odd. Trouble is, you don't know the dimensions of the rest of the board. I mean, does the rest of the board stick out here? Or does it stick back in here? Hmm. I mean, mm, yeah, I don't know. We didn't need to think about that one. Okay, anything else I need to cover today? I need to route this. I can probably start doing that tomorrow. Hopefully get it done this weekend. I also need to get some tiles done as well, and then I can order some PCBs and make some up. One thing you could put on the back of the board is battery connectors for, say, AA batteries. Um, uh, yeah, um, don't know if we've got any, um, maybe parts for that. I mean, I've already got a bunch of those actually. I don't know where I put them. Um,
I think I do have um, some battery holders. <laughs> These are individual ones, probably not very practical. The trouble is fitting them in because they tend to be through hole. The holders I've got ha, 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 will hold, I um, can't remember, four maybe. And I think they have a flying lead, but yeah, you don't want them individually because it's going to interfere with the connectors. You just want, you know, two connectors at the end, not all the connectors in between. I'm just thinking for size though, you could fit it so it would go across here. I don't know if I have any one. Of the multiple holders. Just looking through the parts list. Hmm. No, I don't have any of those. There you are. Do one of that boxes? No, it's under a whole load of boxes. Um. It's a real shame I don't have more room for storage. Yeah, like this sort of thing. This comes on a flying lead. This would probably fit on the rear.
I currently have four foxes. Uh, sorry, four cubs in the garden and two adults. I think. Hang on. Um, four foxes and four cubs in the garden, of course, and the mum and dad, I think. Probably don't want to be out there. They're feeding them. Right. Sorry about that, folks. I can see a bit of a commotion and car alarms going off. It seems to be way down the street. And the fox is scrambling in our garden. I think the, um, the parents are feeding their, um, their cubs. There's one of them just running around the garden, grunting in a very inane way. So the that would fit quite nicely. That accepts four AAs and that comes with lying leads. It's got holes as well. So as long as you had mounting holes and a battery connector. Um, the battery holder. <clears throat> Fuse holders. That's a single cell on there. No, I don't think I've got the um don't think I've got part for that, but um it's easy enough to do. <clears throat> So um, let me just catch up with the um, with the comments. The board is about the right size for a game console. I think size-wise, I can't remember. It's about. I think it's about this sort of size. But I can't remember. I need to check. So it's bigger than Mac OS MX. Um, I'm just thinking if you're going to hold it, you probably you could have the um, LCD on the rear, possibly. Um, Or you, well, you could just do, rather than doing tiles, you could actually just do a, a board that fits on top and connects to all the connectors that it needs to. And has everything on it, screen, you know, and buttons. A single board that covers the entire thing. Entirely possibly.
Right, guys, I'm going to call it quits. Because I'm pretty tired. And I've got some routing and stuff to do tomorrow. Um, so let's continue with this uh, next week. I hope to have this laid out by next week. And maybe if I do get enough time, one or two tiles and get them ordered so that we can start building these that'd be cool anyhow thanks for joining me folks really good feedback tonight as well excellent feedback solve some problems i can continue now i'm pretty much done feature wise so i can actually get this uh rooted out and then ordered Enjoy the rest of your evening, those that have some left. Enjoy your sleep for those that don't. And um, I'm down on the forum and obviously Discord. So let's continue the conversation there uh, next few days and over the weekend as well. Ciao, folks. See you soon.